Good afternoon, fellow listeners and podcasters, on this 8th of May, 2022. You know, I often get asked, um, Santos, what's your leadership style or what, what kind of leader are you? So, you know, I thought to myself, what a great topic for a podcast. Um, let, let's, let's go ahead and dive into that. And, uh, you know, here we are. Now, I, I don't really coin any one type of leadership style per se. I'm um, kind of a Heinz 57 sauce type leader with bits of this and bits of that and things that I take from from other people. Uh, kids, Heinz 57 sauce, look that up. Very popular in the 80s. And when used to describe the context of something, it means that you're basically just a mutt of things. It's okay. Low drama. Don't worry about it. All right. If I had to describe one thing that I do identify with my leadership uh, style, it's going to be that I, I, would, I have a, um, a 100% servant leadership type leadership style. Sorry, I, I'd say that, say that 10 times. I always believe that people do not work for me, but rather I work for them. You have to make sure that your team knows that you generally care and have their best interests at heart. Here is what I deem my leadership style slash philosophy to be in a nutshell below. Now, I took, this, uh, I took this from a VP that I worked for in my very first civilian occupation after the military. Uh, I liked it because it was simple, yet it was detailed enough to kind of explain who I am and what I'm about. I morphed it to fit all other jobs I've had since then. So let's go th- through it together and, uh, you know, have a little bit of fun and commentary. Uh, let's see. So number one, people are your number one asset. Take care of people and they will take care of you. Give them passionate, motivational, and inspiring leadership. Look, that should be a no-brainer in in my eyes. You got to give your, your, the team or the people that you're with, you got to give them purpose, direction, and motivation. And you got to do that by inspiring leadership. Uh, Only you know what that looks like. So you kind of have to figure that out for yourself, okay? Number two, goes without saying, servant leadership. You do not work for me. I work for you. Now, I've had some discussions with people in the past and they say, well, Santos, um, you know, that uh, that really doesn't bode well with me. Um, so what that what that statement means is you do not work for me. I work for you. It's my job as a leader to remove all obstacles, all barriers, uh, challenges that um, my team are facing on the floor or or wherever it is that they're located. Uh, It it is my job to bring them resources and the tools to do their job. It it has nothing to do with your ego. Yeah. People know who's in charge. People know who the boss is. People know who you are based on the, based on the position that you hold, you know, don't, don't be a douchebag and, 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 um, you know, uh, kind of flex your chest and, 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 uh, and, uh, beat your chest. And trust me, you don't need to do that. You know, pe- people know that you're in charge. Uh, you know, just, just it's your job as, as a leader to make it seamless, to make their job easier. I- I'm not saying hold, don't, don't hold people accountable. That's not what I'm saying at all. You have to hold people accountable or, or, or else you have a, you know, you have a society that, you know, where the inmates are running the asylum. But servant leadership, very, very important to me. Number three, team camaraderie is very, very important. I check the linkage all the time. I will seek critical feedback from you constantly. Okay. Uh, if, if you don't give me feedback, uh, I, don't, I don't know because sometimes I don't know if I'm doing good or doing bad. Uh, and every now and then I need to course correct and make sure the ship is being steered correctly. Uh, if one suffers, we all suffer. Here's what I mean by that. I do not believe in mass punishment. Trust me. Those of you out there that are listening and that served time in the military, we all went through mass punishment. You know, when someone screws up, oh, we're going to punish the whole unit. Nope. I don't, I don't, I, I'm done with that. It's not effective. It, uh, it really ticks off your entire workforce. And, and quite frankly, it just serves no purpose. So what I mean by that phrase is if one is suffering, then we've got a brother or sister that's hurting. You know, point blank, we need to make sure that they're okay. So when I try to articulate the idea that if, if one of us is hurting, we all hurt. 
And guess what? It's our job as a team because let's the hate everybody knows what the definition of a team is. It is our job as a team to make sure that we police one another up, right, wrong, or indifferent. We need we need to um, we need to make sure that if someone's hurting, let's 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 get them the help that they need because that's what teams and more so that's what family does for each other. Okay, be the change you want to see and help your team out. That's all I'm saying. All right, number four, delegation equals development, which in turn equals team engagement. I'm only one person. So when you delegate something to a fellow teammate, what you're doing is even they, so I've had people come back to me. I've done this myself when I was a real young leader, uh, right when I first joined the uh, the service and even even some of the college jobs that I had, I always thought, well, I'm getting some tasks that I think my boss should be doing or that one of my supervisors should be doing. Well, guess what? After I learned how to do those certain tasks, I was a little smarter on the job site. I thought to myself, well, hmm, okay, I I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to teach me how to balance the books, look at a profit and loss statement, um, plan an operation. So when, when you delegate, you're not just pushing your work off onto your fellow teammates. You know, you're one, you're, you can't do everything by yourself. If you do, you're going to burn out and you're going to crush yourself. So you are, you're, you're effectively managing all the tasks that you have at hand and, and you will teach those fellow teammates that you give those tasks to how to step in into your shoes when you're not there. Because inevitably, guess what? We all get sick. We all take vacation. We all have family emergencies. Things come up to where people are going to have to step in in your place. And knowing how to run the organization or run the team um, in your absence, that they're just going to benefit from that. And guess what? That prepares them for the next level. Engaging your team, that is one effective way to do it. Right, number five, I recognize and communicate often. People say both up and down, but I added, laterally as well. You always need to ask yourself, who else needs to know? Who else needs to know this, this piece of information? Um, we don't want, we don't, what we used to call in the service, we don't want stovepiped communication or planning in a vacuum, so to speak. You, you want to make sure that people both up and down and laterally know the plan, know the, know the agenda for the day. And guess what? If a piece of important information comes out that you get via text or email, and it's pertinent to share with your team, do not hold on to that information. You'll do way more damage than good. Okay? Who else needs to know? Number six, accessibility to all my teammates. I am never too busy. I will always answer my phone, email, and texts at some point in my day. So here's a small caveat. When I go on vacation or when I'm with with my wife and we're having a dinner date or something like that, all bets are off. Uh, If it is not a dire emergency, it can wait till the next day. Um, However, you know, accessibility to all my teammates, I'm never too busy. Leaders that tell you they're too busy for you, uh, that, that, that should be a red flag. Because guess what? Who's doing the work for you? You're certainly not sitting there doing it all yourself. You have people that are, that are executing your, your directives on the ground. So it behooves you as a leader, you know, especially, you know, I told myself, I I will never be too busy for anybody. I have, everybody's got five minutes in their day. So if somebody comes up to you and it's, and it's just off the cuff and says, Hey, you know, can I talk to you for, for, for a couple minutes? Drop what you're doing, put your computer, you put your laptop screen down and give them their full attention. Uh, Because, you know, that's the professional thing to do. And for the people that work for you and that are doing the work, you owe them that. All right, number seven. This one I absolutely love. I've gotten to I've, I've gotten into so many discussions and so many debates with people. Turnover is my fault. It is one hundred percent my fault if uh, if we have if we have turnover. And, and here's why I think so. This is my personal opinion. You can go do whatever research or you know whatever you want. At the end of the day. It, it, it's my opinion, and you you see it out there. People don't leave companies. 
they leave bosses. And, um, you know, if you haven't done every single thing in your, okay, so here's the deal. If you've done every single thing in your power that you know that, that you, that you can do in order to help an employee, um, okay, then, then feel good about that. If the, if an employee decides to move on to a, a different, a different job because of, you know, it's a better fit, better work-life balance, uh, whatever the case may be. You know, uh, you just have to take that with a grain of salt. But for me, I take turnover very, very personally. Even even when an employee leaves to better themselves, I I, I get it. I don't, you know, I don't uh, manage or own the entire company that I work for. But it still stings because that's a teammate. However, however, never, ever, ever hold an employee back from bettering themselves especially, especially if it's going to fit uh, a better work-life balance for them and their family. Matter of fact, I'm going to take it a step further. You should help them get where they need to be because don't be selfish. You know, don't be selfish. Um, turnover is always my fault. I, I, there's, there's, there is, um, there's always something you can do to better someone's day, to better someone's, to, to, to better someone's work, uh, work environment. You just got to find the resources to do it. Okay. So again, I take that with a grain of salt. I've had many discussions and many debates over that. That's fine. Um, I, I'd, I'd love to hear your, I would love to hear your thoughts on that. All right. Moving on to number eight, I've got uh, several traits that I really, really cherish. So I've got a, you know, number eight are, is entitled, I cherish these traits. Um, and that bunch of sub bullet points. So let, let's, let's go ahead and go through those. Uh, be professional in appearance and poise, how we deal with each other and with the community. Don't look like a rag bag. Um, if you know you've got to give a presentation or go out in public and represent your company, make sure you're cleaned up. It, it, just, just make sure you're professional. Uh, that, that's your job as a leader. Um, you know, deal with the, you know, it's okay to disagree, but there's no need to yell uh, hoot and holler or anything like that. We can have a professional discussion and a, and a, and a professional disagreement. I'm not saying you have to d- agree with everything that I have to say. Matter of fact, I hope you don't, because if you do, uh, that means you're a yes man or a yes lady. I don't need those people on my team. I want people to come and challenge my train of thought. I want them to, uh, to make me do my homework. Cause guess what? That's how we move forward as an organization. And that is how we get smarter as individuals. We have to go do data mining. We have to go do research. It's kind of like taking a course. It's pretty cool. All right. Uh, Team excellence equals vision, creativity, diversity, and inclusion. Uh, Guys, I will tell you what. I am not the smartest dude at the table, nor do I really care to be. I don't want to be. Because guess what? If I have a table of 10 people um, that, that, that I'm giving a briefing or something to, there's 10 people out there that know how to build that mousetrap way better than I do. And you know what? I'm all ears. I love creativity and I love people that come to the table with, with super cool ideas. Again, um, that's how great ideas and great plans are made is with, uh, with, with, with crosstalk and collaboration. Focus on goals and standards. If there's not a standard, we're going to make one. Because I, I guarantee to you, if you don't have a goal and you don't know where that ship is going and you don't know where you're steering, you're just as good as dead. Uh, you will kill your organization and you will kill your team faster than you can blink. Got to have goals. You got to have a standard and everybody's got to he- adhere to them. Honesty, candid feedback. I do not micromanage. I expect you to do your job. Honesty and, and candid feedback. Look, I know the difference between disrespect and disagreement. Again, I'm asking you to disagree with me because I don't have all the right answers. I know when you're being disrespectful. We'll we'll hash that out. But if I got to micromanage you, chances are I'm going to manage you out of the out of the organization because I don't babysit. Anybody that has worked with me can tell you I treat adults like adults. I do not babysit you. If I have to babysit you, you are worthless to me and I do not need you in my organization because now you are costing me or someone else extra energy that I need to that I need to give to 
to somewhere else. Punctuality, attendance, and reliability. Punctuality is a sore spot with me. If you know we have a meeting or a briefing at 9 o'clock in the morning, do not show up at 8.59. I absolutely, positively, 1,000% despise people that walk right in when the meeting's about to start. Uh, my, uh, my standard, it, it, it'll always be the military standard, 10 minutes early, 10 minutes prior without fail. Um, you know, it's that old, it's that, that old saying, uh, if you're, if, if you're on time, you're late. Yeah, that, that's me. So attendance, we all, we, we all have to go to work. We all have to do our jobs. I expect you to be there. Reliability. Deadlines are not optional. If I give you a deadline of seven days, earlier is always better, but you better have a good reason if you break it. You know, maybe if you need more resources, if you need more time, if you need more money, whatever the case may be, just communicate to me. Don't tell me, don't, don't flat out break a deadline or a suspense that I've given you and not tell me because that's going to get you in a conversation you probably don't want to be a part of. All right. Positive attitude and enthusiasm. Not false motivation. There is a difference. Positive attitude and enthusiasm, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we all, we, everybody gets frustrated with their jobs. I'm not asking you not to. However, when you, when you attend work, you should generally, you should generally put on at least a little bit of, little bit of positivity because how many times have we all dealt with those negative Nellies inside the office? And every time you talk to them, oh my gosh, it's just an energy suck. You know, I'm not saying, what I mean by false motivation is, is, is you go around and you're like, yay, everything is awesome. You know, kind of like from the Lego movie or whatever. No, we get it. People have bad days. Uh, there, are, there are external things like home and family and stuff that kind of tie into your mood. I get all that. We've all been there. But a positive attitude and being enthusiastic, not only with your, with your employees, but with your customers in the community, that's going to go a long way. Because I guarantee you, it's, you know, if, if you do that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to in turn motivate you to see how people react to that. Hey, hey, no one, hey, come on, we've all been around that one person that is just Eeyore. Uh, you know, from Winnie the Pooh, like, oh dear, everything's, everything's glum. Everything's, everything's blue. Hey, man, you, you almost got to go take a shower after that because you got to wash all that mess off. That's no fun. All right. All right. I can, I will, I must. I morphed that a little bit. Uh, again, that, that is from uh, Mr. E.T. himself, Eric Thomas, one of my absolute most mo- uh, favorite motivational speakers in the world. Um, I absolutely adore him. He is high energy. And again, I had to stop listening to him before bedtime because man, it was time to go. And it was definitely time to go build an addition to the house or go run a marathon or something. He's super cool. I can, I will, I must, uh, quote unquote, give me the ball. I like people that come to me and say, Hey, you know what, boss? Uh, I got you. Give, Give me that. Uh, I'll take, I'll take that and I'll run with it. Uh, let me let me uh, let me go figure that out, and I'll I'll, I'll come back to you with, with some options. Love, love, love self starters. Take the initiative. Peer mentors, who taught you? Who do you look up to? Do you mentor someone? Okay, men oh, mentorship is such an important part of leadership. Uh, I didn't learn on my own. I have been blessed to work with many, many, many great leaders across my career over the past 25 years of my life, um, you know, doing operational type stuff, I have been blessed by learning from some really, really great mentors. Um, Who taught you? You know, who do you look up to? And in turn, do you cast that back out to the community and do you mentor anybody? You know, that's a, that's, that's a pretty important question you need to ask yourself. And, um, you know, it's something I tell people that I work with, like everybody's got to have a mentor. I, I, I trust me, even, even high functioning people, uh, the, the most high functioning people in the world have mentors. You'll see it. You'll, you'll read about it. All right. Keep it simple with no excuses. Ownership. Don't give me an excuse. If you screwed something up, tell me, tell me what you screwed up. All right. 
this is what I usually tell people. If you, if your decision didn't make, you know, if it wasn't illegal, immoral, or unsafe, we're going to get through it. Might be a little bit, you might be some pain points, but that's okay. We're going to, we're going to get through it just fine. We're going to get through it as a team. Take ownership of it. Don't put blame on anybody else. You know, pull your big boy pants up. Say, hey, boss, I screwed it up. Here's how I plan to fix it. And then, you know, things might be a little bit bumpy, but we're going to get through it. Sense of urgency. Act and move with a purpose. You know, while at work, work hard. Uh, You know, when I say act and move with a purpose, when you get a task, don't procrastinate. Start doing your research. Start gathering all your tools. Start gathering all your resources that you're going to need to to either complete a project or start data mining, whatever it is. But have a sense of urgency. People that sit around like a bump on a log and act act like um, when I give give them a task to do something and they don't deem it important, fires me up a little bit. Okay. Okay. Here's a, here's another one. Um, <laughs> here's another one that that really kind of chafes my ass a little bit. I have a problem, but here is my proposal to solve. Okay. We all have problems. We all have issues. We all have stumbling blocks that we run into. Always give recommended courses of action. Don't, please just don't come into my office or, or come tell me and vomit all over me and say, oh, this is bad. This is bad. This is bad. Um, I have this problem and I have this problem. Okay. So what? What's the so what to all that? And now, now that you just dumped everything out, you know, all over my shoes, what do you plan to do about it? Are you asking me for help? Do you have any recommended courses of action? Do you have even a direction that we should steer the ship? Because if you don't bring your leader a recommended course of action, now you're just a, now you're just one of those people that when we see, when when we see you when we see that type of person we just walk the other way because we know all you're gonna all you're gonna bring us is problems. Problems with no solutions. Do not be that type of person. All right. No surprises. No surprises. And did I mention? No surprises. Bad news is not like fine wine. It does not get better with age. If something, if the shit hits the fan, I need a call. I need a text immediately. Because, you know, when catastrophic things happen, minutes count. Hell, sometimes seconds count. I need to know so that way we can get in front of it and deflect if possible or just come together as a team and just figure it out. So please, no surprises. Always let me know. Number nine, big, big, big one. The answer is never in your office. If you have not scheduled or do you, you don't have currently scheduled some time to go interact with your team out on the floor, and you park your you park yourself in your office for eight to ten hours a day. I'm here to tell you, um, they're talking about you, and and, and they are uh, they are well aware that you are leading from a screen, which I absolutely hate. The answer is never in your office because guess what? Something may look pretty awesome on paper or on that screen that you're reading, but when it's time for execution out on the floor, it may fall flat. There's no way you're going to know unless you get out and engage with your team. All right. Lastly, family is very important to me. Now, then I'm not to let me be clear. I didn't put it last because I think it's the least important. I mentioned it last because it, this is literally one of those cases where I save the best for last. Family is very, very important to me. I'm not a fan of burning the candle at both ends. I have a schedule and a routine and I, ex- I stick to it religiously. I'm a big fan of uh, I'm a big fan of saying if it's not if I live and die by my by my calendar if it's not on my calendar it doesn't happen except uh, exceptions happen but uh, that that should be the exception and not the rule okay staying late at work should be an exception and not the norm so figure it out you have people at home that are absolutely dedicated to you and that are supporting you from being at home whether it be your wife, your kids, who, whoever. Give them the attention, the love, and the respect that they deserve. Okay? Family time and off time is super duper important. 
So please, please, please remember that and figure out how to get a routine worked in to your daily life. That way, when it comes for date night or when it comes for a special occasion with the family, you don't blow it. All right. Well, there you have it in a nutshell. Uh, This is how I take teams uh, and people in general and turn them into a cohesive unit. It's worked for me. Uh, Again, I've I've, I've taken some principles that I learned in the military and um, morphed them with some with some civilian leaders that I worked with. And it just kind of made it my own. Uh, Literally, that's that's leadership and philosophy. It can be whatever you want it to be. Um, It just needs to it just needs to cover the bases and, and make sure that people know uh, where you where you come from and where you stand. Uh, and I stress it's never a culture of me, but always a culture of we. I'm going to say that again. It, it's never, ever, ever a culture of me, but always a culture of we. No one, and I mean no one, gets to where they are without the help of those around them. This includes family. This includes your spouse. Okay? No one gets to where they are without, without the help of, of other people. Now, shout out to all the men and women that I've served with over the years in both uh, military and, and civilian careers. I've learned so much and I continue to do so. Thank you all for what you have done, what you continue to do, and what you will do in the future. You guys are amazing and uh, I, I'm absolutely blessed to have served alongside of you. All right. As always, check me out on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> I can't talk today, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And finally, my website over at cmike.org. Now that is uh, C is in Charlie, M is in Mike, I is in India, K is in Kilo, E as in echo.org, cmike.org. And again, that is the courtesy of the brilliant staff over at podpage.com. So for all you podcasters out there that want a super clean and super cool website that is really user-friendly, like, you know, I'm a, I'm a knothead when it comes to setting stuff up like that, but um, I was able to get uh, my website up and going at podpage.com. Super cool. Uh, make sure and fill out the contact form to subscribe and drop me some comments either on my blog or uh, on my podcast. And you can find that again at cmike.org. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's always my pleasure to bring you things that hopefully open your mind and help you in some way. Uh, there's a lot of life to live yet. So go out and live it. Go out and get it. Go, go out and pursue your dreams, okay? I'll leave you as, all, as, as what I always do um, with some kind of nugget or quote to get the brain juices flowing. This is a quote from none other than Teddy Roosevelt himself, and it says, Nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. Charlie Mike. Bye now.